the first shots of the Civil War are fired in Fort Sumter. But Bingham's home state of Missouri, a slave state, has been a war zone for years. While both he and his family had owned slaves at one time, by the time he reaches middle age, his position is now clear. Bingham starts making himself a somewhat controversial character, somebody who clearly has stated his uh, support for a unionist agenda. As the violence mounts, Bingham joins the Union Army, but he is incensed by the treatment of the Missourians by the Union supporters from Kansas. Kansas men on the Union side routinely raid Missouri farms to free slaves, but they also steal whatever they can find, often burning farmhouses and leaving a path of destruction. They wear red leather leggings to protect themselves from thorns and brush. The red legs also serve as an intimidating reminder to their victims. These Kansans are also known as Jayhawkers. It was all part of a tactic to keep everybody on edge. And again, it was truly the use of terrorism. If you keep these towns scared, they cannot be affected. You can't go plow a field if you're afraid that you're going to be attacked in the middle of the day. Some of Missouri's young men turn to riding in independent Confederate guerrilla bands and create havoc amidst the Union war effort. Under leaders such as William Quantrill, they raid across the border into Kansas. Today, it would be called insurgents. Attempts to quell the constant attacks from Missouri guerrilla fighters along the border failed. The Union command in Kansas City devised a strategy to strike at targets near and dear to the Missouri guerrilla fighters' hearts. One step that they take is to arrest the women. They decide to arrest the sisters, the relatives of known guerrillas that they can find because they, I think rightly, suppose that these women are providing food, shelter, clothing to these male guerrillas. The very fact that the federal authorities would put women and children in jail, that was hugely insulting. The jail is not a traditional jail. It just happens to be the three-story house in Kansas City that belongs to George Bingham. He has not lived in the building for several years. Union troops took it over without his knowledge. It is around dinner time on August 13, 1863, when the unthinkable happened. Prisoners begin to feel a strange sensation. The building is shaking on its foundation. The building collapses, killing five of 17 women inmates and permanently maining many more. There were a lot of people who believed that the federal authorities had intentionally allowed this building to be compromised and, and to fall on them. And knowing that some would be injured and killed in the process. Whatever the cause, it was no secret that the Union authorities knew the building to be unstable. Bingham felt guilty about the jail collapse. I think he very much resented that his home had been used in this capacity without his knowledge. Have they said what's caused this? These buildings stood just fine until the soldiers moved in then. 
he felt anger about the way his home had been used. Especially if you find out that a 14-year-old girl was killed because the house was not stable enough. And that 14-year-old girl happened to be the younger sister of noted Missouri guerrilla, Bloody Bill Anderson. We can't even emphasize the impact that has on Western Missouri because now war has a whole new meaning. And if you can take war to civilians, those Confederate sympathizers decide, we'll give you war on civilians. Within a week of the Kansas City jail collapse, rebel guerrillas under William Quantrill ride into Lawrence, Kansas with lists of men to be killed and buildings to be put to the torch. For those guerrillas with wives and sisters barely a week in their graves, the tragedy helps fan the killing in Lawrence. Stores are looted, buildings burned, and almost 200 men and boys lie dead, most of them shot at point-blank range. Supposedly, when the guerrilla fighters attack Lawrence, Kansas, early on that fateful morning, they shouted, remember the women in Kansas City. The Lawrence Massacre, as it came to be known, shocked the nation. In response, the Union Army resorts to an extreme measure to put an end to the kind of violence that killed so many in Lawrence. Known as Order No. 11, Union General Thomas Ewing commands the Union Army to forcefully evacuate those living in all or part of four Missouri counties along the Kansas border. Their goal, to deprive Missouri guerrillas of places to hide and supply when they came back across the border. We often don't think of refugees in the United States of America, but right here in Missouri, we had refugees. We have residents in the western counties of Missouri being told to evacuate, no matter what their political stripe. These innocent people, these civilians, are devastated by having to pack up everything they own and evacuate the area. As many as 30,000 people, mostly women and children, are forced out of their homes. The men are in the army or have left the area. The Union hired Kansas militia groups to enforce the order in many places. There was no consideration of the fact that many of these militia groups hated Missourians. And so these groups are told that they are to burn the fields. But these red legs, these Kansans, burn the houses. In order to get control over a guerrilla warfare, the Kansas Jayhawkers came in and destroyed much of what was left. People were not only left without a home, their homes were looted. It's a devastating moment in the history of the war in Missouri. This is retribution for bloody Kansas in the 1850s. It comes to be known as the Burnt District after the war, and most families don't return. Among those who are horrified by the forced evacuation is George Caleb Bingham. As the ashes of the Great War settle, he vows to tell the world what happened here. Bingham creates what would be his most controversial work. The painting will be known as Order No. 11, but the full title includes the phrase, Martial Law. He believes America needs to understand the perils of granting the military absolute authority over its citizens. Bingham, as a resident of Missouri, but also as a supporter of the Union, was, was conflicted. And it took him a while before he was able to get that out in paint. 
lot of people don't realize is that a painting of this size and scale takes several months just to plan. So he would have done multiple sketches, multiple studies in preparation for this before he even began to put paint to canvas. Bingham puts a red leg right in the center of the picture. And this would have immediately identified to those in the know that this person was from Kansas. There was this animosity between Kansans and Missourians, and that this was really an abuse of power. It really is Bingham painting with a clenched fist. That anger is spilling out on his canvas. Bingham travels far and wide, proudly displaying his enormous painting in hopes of raising awareness throughout the Union of the atrocities committed in Missouri. He also lobbies the federal government to give compensation to the Order No. 11 victims. Bingham was criticized for representing people wearing the Union uniform behaving so badly. The public response is not what he expects. While some feel empathy for the suffering depicted in the painting, others see it as an act of dissension that teeters on the brink of treason. The Unionists immediately thought they were being villainized. He was accused of being a Southern sympathizer, but he wrote extensively about how that was not the case, how he was not advocating for slavery, how he was not sympathizing for the Confederate cause. People see this painting as overly dramatic, and it doesn't really fit into modern taste. I think it doesn't show the subtleties and nuances that many of his genre scenes do show. So I think it was difficult for him to be as subtle or as sensitive as he may have been in other, in other contexts. One historian writes that the painting is excellent propaganda, but mediocre art. I think today we can step back and look at it a little differently. We can see the power of this image. His pictures were about liberty and they were about freedom and it was against martial law. For years, his painting brings tremendous attention to a powerful moment in history. But the controversy it raises will haunt him. His reputation in the community as a respected artist and citizen was damaged. His career would never be the same.